First, I want to say Kahalaya, Hawabai, Shiba Mashiach, I was shy, just giving praises to the Most High in His Son's precious name. And we just want to do a lesson on what did the apostles think Christ was coming for? What did Paul think Christ was coming for? Did he teach anything different? What did the prophets say Christ was coming for? What did Christ himself even say he was coming for? Right. So we just want to go into some scriptures right quick. And just to, you know, because the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, may every word be established. And we kind of understand that. And we got to let God be true and every man a liar. Right. And we just want to start here with Acts. Let's see what the Bible is saying. Acts chapter one, right? And it reads, it says, when they therefore were come together, they asked him saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And listen what he said. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the season which the father has put in his own power. So we know exactly it's talking about when, you know what I'm saying, the kingdom of heaven coming, right? When Christ was finna come and give, you know what I'm saying, take the kingdom, right? Get the kingdom, right? We're talking about heaven. No doubt about it. Christianity, Christians even know, the only one know when Christ is coming back is the father. They understand that. But let's just go here. And listen what the scripture is saying. It says, and as he sat upon the Mount Olive, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world? So we know we're talking about the end of the world. Listen what the scripture is saying. And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Listen what the scripture is saying. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See, ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Right? So we know we're talking about the end times. Drop down to 14. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. This is what the scripture is saying. Drop to 36. This is what the scripture is saying. But of that day and hour, no, no man, no, not the angels in heaven, but the father only. So we know that it's talking about the end of the world. And what did they say in Acts 1 and 6? When are you going to restore the kingdom back to Israel? So the apostles thought that Christ was coming back to restore the kingdom to Israel. And if they were wrong, wouldn't Christ correct them? No, I'm coming to bring the, 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 the kingdom to everybody, to all nations and tongues. You see that? He didn't correct them. He said, oh, nobody knows but the son. So let's go to some prophets. What did the prophets prophesy was coming? Because we, we want to understand that none of these prophecies is going to fail. And we're going to go to the scripture and just prove that. This is what the scripture is saying. The scripture shall not depart from Judah, nor the, the lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall be the gathering of the people. So this is this is was prophesied a long time ago, right? That Christ was going to come and gather the people, and those people we're talking about is Israel, no one else. Well, let's prove it. Isaiah twenty-six. And the Bible says, and I will restore thy judges as a first and thy counselors as at the beginning. And after that shall thou be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city 
Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness. This is talking about the northern kingdom, right? Because Zion, when you're usually talking about Zion in the scripture, it's talking about, you know, the, the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, right? So the converts is, is the northern kingdom coming back to the covenant. It says, and the destruction of the transgressors and of sinners shall be together, and they shall forsake the Lord and be consumed. So we understand he's coming back to restore in Zion, just like we read in Acts 1 and 6, to restore the kingdom back to Israel. But we're going we gonna to go with a couple of prophets because the Most High gave these same prophecies to different prophets. Do you see that? Now let's go to Jeremiah. Listen what the scripture is saying. Behold, the day has come, says the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. This is talking about Christ. And a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. And in his days shall Judah be saved and Israel, right? The converts dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. So we know it's talking about Christ. It was prophesied that Christ was coming to save Judah and come and save all Israel, the nation of Israel. That's why we get Acts 1 and 6 when they said, are you at this time come to save, you know, to bring the kingdom back to Israel? This is what the Bible is saying. All right, quick. I want you guys to get an understanding that this is what was told to happen all the time. Nothing different, right? But our but 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 your churches say that um Christ is coming back to restore and give everybody the kingdom. Everybody is going to the kingdom of heaven as long as you are Christian and believe. But the Bible and the prophets taught that he was coming to restore the kingdom back to Israel. Look at what the Bible is saying. In those days and at that time, will I cause a branch of righteousness to grow unto David. We talking about who the world and he calls Christ. And he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. And in those days shall Judah be saved and Jerusalem shall dwell safe. And right now it's not talking about those people in the land right now because they're not dwelling safe. Listen, and this is the name wherewith it says, she shall be called the Lord our righteousness. For thus says the Lord, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. You see that? Drop down to 26. And the scripture read, then will I cast away the seed. Listen, listen what the Bible said. Thus says the Lord, if my covenant be not with the day and night, and if I have appointed the ordinance of heaven and earth, if I have not appointed the ordinance of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob. In David, my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be ruler over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. So they they was thought, well, the apostles thinking, well, you, are you now just going to give mercy upon Israel and deliver us from the hand of our enemies, which were Romans at that time, right? Everybody will agree to that. Right quick, right? We go into a couple of prophets and we just want to know what did they think was coming, right? What did they prophesize was coming? This is what the scripture is saying. Listen right here. And say unto them, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen. And at that moment in Rome, they were amongst the heathen. And they were also scattered abroad. Listen, whether they be gold, it will gather them on every side and will bring them into their own land. Are you ready to restore the kingdom back to Israel? And I will make them one nation, the, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, right? This is what it's talking about, right? Your converts. Do you hear me? Zion and the converts. So we're talking about, we understand that the most high divorced the northern kingdom you know what I'm saying, a long time ago. Now that's that adopted, that breach being sealed up, and they're coming back into the fold, right? 
and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. Are you about to restore the kingdom back to Israel? And one king shall be king to them all, right? They thought, you know, Christ is the king. They understood that. Listen, and they shall no more be two nations, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Zion and his converts, listen, neither shall there be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Listen what the scripture is saying. Drop down to 24. And David, my servant, shall be the king over them. Talking about Christ. And they shall have one shepherd, Christ. And they shall also walk in my judgment and observe my statutes and do them. We're talking about in the kingdom, we're going to be doing God's laws and commandments still. So we can see in the scripture, his laws and commandments are not done away with even now. We got to get, get back to that, the restore of the breach the past to dwell in, we got to come back to the laws and commandments. He's going to restore the kingdom back to Israel. This is what the scripture is saying. I'm going to read it again. And David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgment and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children, children, forever. Listen, and my servant David shall be the prince forever. So Christ is going to be the prince forever. Listen to what the Bible is saying. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. Who is that them? That's talking about Israel, the whole family, both, right? And it shall be an everlasting covenant with them, Israel. And I will place them and multiply them, Israel, and I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them, right, forevermore. And my tabernacle also shall be with them. Yeah, I will be their God and they shall be my people, Israel. And the heathen shall know that I, Yahweh, do sanctify Israel, the them. Listen, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. So when they were asking in Acts 1 and 6, they were, the prophets already had prophesied that Christ was coming to deliver the kingdom back to Israel. And they had a good reason to think that it was coming at that time because the same people that was in power in Rome was going to be in power when Christ come back. And we're going to prove that with the scripture. But we want to hit some more prophets, right? The most high is showing you this is what they thought was coming. They didn't think anything else was coming, right? They, they weren't coming around. They understood they were coming to restore the kingdom back to Israel. What did Christ say? Go preach to Israel, right? What did Christ say? He didn't come but for Israel. Listen to what the scripture is saying. And it reads, and the kingdom and dominion In the kingdom and dominions and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey. So they thought that Christ was coming back to restore the kingdom back to Israel and all these other nations whom they were serving was going to serve them. Do y'all see that? Right. And obey. Here, too, is the end of the matter. So we understood what that was talking about. So they were thinking it was prophesied by the prophets that the Christ was coming back to restore the kingdom back to Israel. This is a scripture. Now we, we done read Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Now we in Daniel. Let's see what Hosea thought, right? We just, <laughs> this is what they were preaching. This is what was pro this was preached. Now we have a different gospel that's going around the whole world. Christianity which is the great falling away. That's preaching a whole nother gospel that the prophets never did preach. Listen to what the scripture is saying. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image and without an ephod and without a, a, says, a teraphim, right? And afterward, all the children of Israel shall return and seek the Lord their God and David, their king, that's what they thought. Christ, are you coming to deliver the kingdom back to Israel? And shall fear the Lord 
and his goodness in the latter days. And we got to understand they thought these things that 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 um, it was that time because the same people, the same person that was going to be in the end time prophesied in, in Ezra was in power, which is wrong. But let's just let's just prove that right quick. Right. Let, let's let's just prove that. And then we'll move on. Second Ezra. Six, if I'm not mistaken, and it's not. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning that follows. That's why they asked. Jacob is the is the progenitor of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? So that's why they asked him, because Esau, the Edomites, were ruling at that time. But let's, you know what I'm saying? So, and this is why, right? This is proof, right? The Roman Empire. The Roman Empire, the empire of the Edomites, Esau. So they had a right to think he was coming at that time to the, deliver the children of Israel back because the end of Esau is the beginning of Jacob, the kingdom of heaven, the restoring of Israel back to the, restoring Israel to, to, to back into power. Do y'all get that? <laughs> I hope y'all understand that you guys are following along. Let's see what Joel thought, right? What did Joel preach? Listen to what the scripture is saying. It says, and Yahweh also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall be shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people, right? So that's what they, you know, they Christ was there. They asking him, is it this time? And the strength of the children of Israel so shall ye know that I am Yahweh, your power dwelling in Zion, my holy mount. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no stranger pass through it her anymore. Are we ready to knock out these Edomites out of, out of the land of Israel and restore the kingdom back to Israel? Listen what the scripture is saying. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine and the hills shall flow with milk and the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters and the fountains shall come forth in the house of Yahweh and shall water in the valley of Shittim. Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness, right? That's what was in power for the violence against the children of Judah and they were violent even then, right? It says, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah should dwell safely forever, and Jerusalem shall from generation till generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for the Lord dwelleth in Zion. So that's why they thought, right? They thought that it was that time. Are you coming? This is what the prophets say was coming. This is what prophets, what Christ said. Christ said he didn't come to destroy nothing what the prophets said, right? Let's just pull that. If I'm going to stay, I might be staying. Let's go ahead and pull this right here first. This is what Christ said this time. And he answered and said, I am not sent, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he even said he was only sent for Israel, right? Christ said this, right? Right quick. And he also said, think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. So anything that the prophets prophesied Jesus didn't come to destroy. And what has he been, what was the, what have the prophets been prophesied? That he was coming to restore the kingdom back to Israel in Zion. No stranger is going to even come through. We're reading what the prophet said. And Jesus saying in his own word, 
think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I didn't come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one jot, not one tittle shall pass from the law or the prophets till all be fulfilled. Do you see that? So till all the prophecy be fulfilled, none of he didn't come to change any of this. And what are we reading that the prophet said that Jesus was coming to restore the kingdom back to Israel? Not a whole bunch of people, not the whole world, but back to Israel. And their rulership is going to be a forever rulership. Thus says the Lord, thus says the Holy Bible. So Jesus saying the same thing, and he didn't come to destroy that. But Christians will have you believe that he came and everything got changed. Now what the prophet said was coming, it don't matter. Now everybody is Israel, but that's just not true, right? We got to let God be true and every man a liar. Here's another prophet. What is he saying, right? Amos chapter nine, verse 11. In that day, will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. We talking about Zion. It says, enclose the breaches thereof. Zion and her converts, the Southern kingdom and the Northern kingdom, that's that breach. And I will raise up his ruins, and I will build him as in the days of old, when they were together, right? When the kingdom belonged to Israel, and they shall possess the remnant of Edom, right? Who had us in captivity right then, Roman? So now we're going to take them into abundance. Are you about this time going to restore the kingdom back to Israel? So now we can put them in bondage and slavery? Now they got to pay us taxes? It says, and of all the heathen, right, Africans and all, which are called by my name, says the Lord, that doeth this. Behold, the day has come, says the Lord, that the plowmen, at that moment, they were plowmen, right? They were serving to, to the Romans, will overtake the reaper. Who was reaping the Romans? The Edomites, right? Who was still in power to this day? The threader of grapes, the sower of the seas, the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt, right? And I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel, and they shall build up the waste, the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof and shall also make gardens and eat the fruit thereof. And I will plant them upon their land. Are you going to bring the outcasts, the converts, the northern kingdom back to our land to restore their breach? Are you about to restore the kingdom back to Israel? And they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them, says Yahweh, thy power. What did Obadiah say, right? What did Obadiah think was coming? I Obadiah 1 and 17. It says, but upon Mount Zion, but upon Mount Zion shall be delivered. And there shall be holiness in the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Listen what the scripture is saying, right? In the house of Jacob should be a fire. In the house of Joseph, a flame. In the house of Esau, for stubble. Are we finna kill these Edomites that's in our land that got control that we gotta be serving to, to them? And they shall kindle in them and devour them. It says, and there shall be no more remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. And they of the south shall possess the Mount of Esau, and they of the plain of the Philistines, and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess the lad. And the captivity of the host of the children of Israel shall possess the Canaanites, and the Zarephath, and the captivity of Jerusalem, which is Sepharad, shall possess the cities of the south. And Savior shall come up on Mount Zion to judge in Mount Esau in the kingdom shall be Yahweh. Are you at this time? So we're talking about the kingdom of God. Are you at this time ready to restore the kingdom to Israel? So the kingdom of heaven that is coming is for Israel, right? We're going through prophets, what the apostles preach, what Paul preached, because some of you guys think Paul preached something different, but Paul's ministry was different. No, Paul said himself, he taught nothing different. But well, I'm going to prove that to you. But let's go to Micah. What did Micah say was coming? Micah 5 and 2. 
but thou Bethlehem, right? In Ephrat, it says, though ye be little among thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, who's going forth have been from old and from everlasting. So we understand that that was that's why they asked Christ, are you are you going to be king and rule over us and have and, and, and take our kingdom back and rule over these other nations? That's what the Bible said. Therefore, will he give them up until the time that she which traveleth had brought forth? Then the raiment of the, his brethren, the converts, shall return unto the children of Israel. And he shall stand and feed the strength of Yahweh in his majesty, in the name of the Lord, his power. And they shall abide, for now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth. See, and that's what they thought was coming, right? Because everybody is going, when we get to the kingdom, everybody's going to come and we're going to teach them our ways. Well, right now, what's coming, what Christ is coming back is to deliver Israel and forgive their sins, right? This is what the scripture is saying, Zephaniah. Hope you guys are understanding and following along, right? Because the scriptures don't lie. God's word will not come back void. And we're going to prove that with the scripture. Zephaniah 3 and 15. What did Zephaniah think was coming? And the Lord have taken away thy judgment have cast out thy enemies. Are you about to cast out these Romans? The king of Israel, even Yahweh, is in the midst of thee, right? Christ was there. Thou shalt not see evil no more. Is our punishment over? Right? Because this is the Roman captivity was not. We wouldn't Greek captivity. We were just in the Persian Medes captivity, the Babylonian captivity. This is what the scripture is saying. In that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, fear thou not. And to Zion, let not thy hand be slack. This is what the scripture is saying. It says, the Lord thy God is in the midst of thee, is mighty, and he will save. He will, it says, he will rejoice over thee with joy and will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. This is what the scripture is saying. So this is what they thought was coming. Christ was coming to deliver, kick these Romans out of the land, these Edomites out of the land. And all these other nations come in captivity to us and restore the kingdom back to Israel. This is what the prophet said was coming. Did the prophets, was the prophet speaking on their own mind? They weren't. And we understand that. Drop down to 20. It says, and at that time, will I bring you again, even in the time that I will gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity, before your eyes, says the Lord. And we want to understand, even though they were in their land, whenever we're not, there's not an Israelite ruling over us, and the Israelite not at the top, even though we're in America and it's, it seems as, as we're free, but long as we're not in our own land, look, we're in captivity. That's what that is. What is Zechariah? I'm going to different prophets saying the same thing is coming. Why haven't your pastors, why don't your pastors tell you these things, right? Why do they act? Why do they act as if these prophecies are not coming, are not going to come true? When Christ said he didn't come to destroy anything the prophet said until it all be fulfilled. What are the one things that are going to be fulfilled that Israel is going to go back to the top, right? That's what's going to be fulfilled. That's what's going to happen. This is what the scripture is saying. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Shout, O daughters of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just, having salvation lowly, riding upon an ass and upon a coat and a foal of ass. See, they understood that. Right? This is the king. This is the Messiah that was prophesied to come to restore the kingdom back to Israel. That's why that question was even posed. And who was in power? Edomites, who are the same people in power now. So they had a right to think that at that moment, Christ was going to deliver them out of captivity. Now, Matthew chapter 20, listen what the scripture is saying. And 21, and it reads, 
And he said unto her, what will thou? She said unto him, grant that these my two sons may sit, one at thy right hand and the other at thy left hand in the kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink the cup that I drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, we are able. And he said unto him, ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and my left hand, it says, is not mine to give, but it shall be given unto them that whom is prepared of my father. Same different nation. When he sit in the kingdom, can my son sit on your left hand and right hand? She's talking to Israel, right? When you bring Israel, can my son sit back? Because she thought the same thing. Are you? Right now, for to restore the kingdom back to Israel, right quick. Or whenever that is, whenever that be so, is that what you're about to do? Can my son sit on the, sit next to you in the kingdom? Luke chapter 20, 22 and 29. And I appointed unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed unto me, right? So we understand that it says that ye may eat and drink in my table in my kingdom and sit on the throne judging the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So when the kingdom of God come, is coming for to restore, when Christ come back, he's coming to restore the kingdom back to Israel. That's what the Bible says. And we just want to make sure we understand, right? The most prophecies. Look what Christ, look, look, look what the most I said about his prophecies. 34, right? And 16. And it reads, seek ye out the book of the Lord. And this is what I was just saying, reading. And read, none of one of it says, no one of these should fail. None of those prophecies that the prophets spoke about that you can find in the book of the Lord will fail. The kingdom when Christ come back, is coming to Israel, according to the Bible, right? None shall want her mate. There's no other book like the Bible. For my mouth have commanded, and in his spirit have gathered them, right? In his spirit have he gathered these books together and came to the prophets. But let me just show that with Zechariah right quick, that, that the prophets didn't speak their own words, right? They spoke... They were moved by the spirit, right? Yeah, they have made their hearts in the band of the stone. At least they should hear the law in the words which the Lord of hosts have sent in his spirit of the former prophets. The apostles heard those words. They understood this is what Christ was coming for. Do you see that? Right quick, let me go ahead, go to Paul. Because what but, but Paul talked to the Gentiles. Did Paul think anything different? Let's see. But this is Paul. We understand that Luke walked around with Paul and Luke wrote eight, but this is Paul's, this is what Paul was saying. But I confess unto thee that after the way that they call heresies. Because a lot of people say, well, we're talking about is heresy. Wait a minute, it's not for everybody. You guys are in a cult. Do you see what I mean? So I worship God of my father, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Paul believed that the kingdom was coming back to Israel. And he taught nothing different. Do you see that? So I hope you guys got edified with the scripture and what the Bible is saying, right? The, he's coming to restore the apostles, the prophets, Yahweh Shai, who the world enemy calls Jesus Christ. Paul all thought that he was coming to restore the kingdom back to Israel. If anyone come preaching another gospel, which they have not preached. This is what the scripture is saying. Let me see if I can pull that right quick. Let me see if I can pull that. Oh, man. 
right? But give me bear with me. I'm gonna end with this, right? Because in 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 Christianity churches, they are preaching another gospel, right? Because what does the gospel man preach? That the Israel, that the kingdom. Right quick, forgive me. Look what it says. For he that cometh preaches another Jesus, right? Jesus never said, Jesus said himself, he is only coming for Israel, whom we have not preached. Receive not the spirit, which he it says, which he have not received, or another gospel, the gospel is selfish for Israel, which we have not accepted, he might, it says, you might well bear with them. So if anybody come preaching another gospel, receive them not, right? Because Christ said the same thing. The prophet said, the apostles thought, Paul thought that he was coming to restore the kingdom back to Israel. Christianity said he's coming to save the whole entire world, right? But I'm I'm going through scripture, showing you every witness by witness what they thought, what they preached. Because if if in Acts chapter one and verse six, when the, when we begin, if it was anything else, wouldn't Christ have had corrected them? He would have corrected them. Look what he says. It says, when they therefore were come together. They asked him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Right? This is the Bible. The more it was prophesied that we were going to go and, 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 and fall away. And we kind of understand that some of you guys are not going to get it. Even though I read, gave you precept upon precept, showing you that the prophets always said that Christ was coming back to restore the kingdom to Israel. And we get it, even though it's easy to see, anybody can see, but a lot of people are not going to see. And this is because the Bible is going to be tr true all the time. And this is the reason why everybody can't see what is clearly evident. What then? Have Israel not obtained which he seeketh for? But the election have obtained it. Everybody that understand that we got to come back to the laws and commandments of God and the faith of the Messiah. They understand who Christ is coming back for. And the rest was blinded. Listen, according to what has written, God, the most high God has given them a spirit of slumber. Eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day. It is what it is. It's time to repent. Keep the laws and commandments of God and have faith in the Messiah, right? This is the only way to get the kingdom of God that's coming back for Israel. Not because I say it, the Bible says it. Shalom.